So there's a lot going on in the world right now. I was talking to my wife about this. I was like, you walk out into your neighborhood and you look around and you see homes, you see streets, you see infrastructure, and you assume everything is good. You, what you see is what is, and everything that happens is very visible. But it's not until you get underneath the housing development, where the plumbing is, the electricity, the water flow, all the ingredients that make up and make the neighborhood work. Well, this example is what we are ignoring or haven't considered when it comes to the global economic machine. See, in the last month and a half, 17 million people have become jobless. All of a sudden, um, markets have fallen apart. At one point, the bond market froze up. And yet nobody's really saying why this is happening. Well, today, I'm gonna to talk about one of the elements that is causing this to happen. So have you ever considered when we buy goods from other countries and we pay in US dollars, where those US dollars go? Well, they go outside the United States where we lose track of them. We don't, are not able to track where the US dollars are going, how they're transacting throughout the world. The majority of world transactions with, between countries and industries and companies is done, majority of it done in US dollars. The US dollar is the uh, reserve currency of the world. It is what pretty much everybody transacts business in. China is a prime example. They do 1% of all their transactions in their own currency with other countries, 1%. They do the rest of them in US dollars. So you have to have US dollars to do business on a global scale. How did this come about? Well, after World War II, we started buying goods from other countries throughout the world. And in doing so, we paid with our US dollars. During that period of time, we signed what is called the Brenton Woods Agreement. But it basically, we became the policemen of all the waterways in the world so that we could create free trade. Well, in doing that, we took a more of a power stance uh, within the global economy as well as militarily. So after World War II, we're transacting business with other countries, with other you know, importing goods, and we're paying in US dollars. Well, those US dollars are now out in the world. And during that time, we become, we get engaged into the Cold War with the Soviet Union. And so all the communist countries throughout the world who had monies or US dollars in US banks decided that we could, the United States could freeze all those accounts and really put a big hurting on those countries, those communist countries, to be being able to do business. And so they moved their money from US banks to European banks. And that's where they started parking their money. Well, those dollars are now referred to as Euro dollars. And Nobody really knows how many Euro dollars are within the world, but it's said to be around 50 to $60 trillion. And to do business with other countries and to sell your goods to, from one country to another country, we've basically standardized that, that transaction with the US dollar. Fast forward to about a month and a half ago when the coronavirus comes about and all of a sudden, there is a massive rush on getting US dollars. Well, how can you get US dollars? You have to try and give something up or sell something for those US dollars. And that something is US treasury bonds, or treasury notes, anything related to US treasuries. So second week or so of March, we see a glut of US treasuries coming into the marketplace to sell and 
in exchange have US dollars because now everybody's freaked out right I mean we're no longer flying to Europe we're no longer flying to China we're no longer moving around we're actually starting to shut down and you see China and the Wutan Wu uh, parish I believe or our area I, I totally botched that but anyhow um, they're locked down for what 11 weeks or so and all of a sudden the world slowly comes to a stop which means we're not transacting business anymore with other countries like we were in a normal environment which means if you have US dollars you're in a power position if you have an enormous amount of debt and low US dollar reserves you're in a pickle and so the IMF the International Monetary Fund in a typical year gets a handful of uh, bailout requests and this is where the a country or major entity comes to them and says listen we, we can't make our bills we need money can you inject money into this so the IMF in a regular year gets a handful of uh, requests for bailouts well in the last basically 30 or so days they've had 80 requests for bailouts bail us out we do not have the US denominated currency to pay our bills we're in trouble we have no revenue streams uh, because of uh, the trade system is basically halting because of the coronavirus all of a sudden the world is in a major panic and you see a mass movement to sell US Treasuries and in exchange get US dollars now I believe there's about nine different central banks that the US will basically transact money with transfer money with it's called a swap line and that's been the way it is Canada Mexico um, United Kingdom handful of others well during this period of time since the coronavirus has hit we've added nine more banks central banks to do transactions with to exchange your treasuries for our US dollars now there's this thing called the repo line repo window and that's where you can pledge your treasuries as uh, collateral in exchange you get US dollars and back in September there was a basically a freeze up of that um, and Federal Reserve stepped in and became the market maker in that window and they started putting in billions of dollars on a monthly basis to keep that flow of money happening fast forward to Martin uh, middle first second week in March and all of a sudden that window is flooded with people trying to sell their securities their treasuries Fed has to step in and because if they don't the US Treasury goes from strong to a disaster you would see mass selling and the Treasury would collapse which would then put us in a major pickle everybody's going for dollars because there's not enough euro dollars in the world so the Fed steps in with its uh, first uh, 1.3 trillion dollar injection of money it's basically putting oil into an engine let's get the engine going again let's get the bond market moving the bond market is the largest market by five times in the entire world it's gigantic okay when it freezes up that's like you're plumbing throughout your neighborhood and everybody's toilets blow up and everything that went down comes back up it's a major piece of the economic plumbing in the world and so the Fed steps in with 1.3 trillion to get the thing moving again they continue to have, they have continued to do that with another 1.5 trillion they're constantly putting now money into the system to keep the system moving now we hear our president talk a lot about restarting the economy when we're going to open up for business and I've realized he's concerned that if we continue to be stay at home and that the I believe 160 million people who work throughout the United States don't actually go to work you know yeah I can work in a home I do it here I've been home for what, five weeks now 
I've been working from home, no problem. But a lot of people who are in manufacturing, blue collar jobs where you have to be on the on site or you know, uh, teachers, that kind of thing, you gotta be on site to do business. Those people aren't working. The restaurant and retail industry is not working. Those people need money badly. And because of this freeze up, we're no longer transacting business overseas, which means we're not putting US dollars out into the system and we're slowly coming to a grinding halt. And so that is why the Federal Reserve and the Treasury are anxiously putting as much money into the system. How can I keep you from uh, the whole economic system collapsing? Now, at some point, they're going to have to do something. I know, I believe that you just don't eradicate a, a virus of this magnitude in a matter of 60, 90 days. I mean, it's still floating around. I just recently heard where, um, I believe it was Singapore, had closed down, uh, went through a process, numbers count uh, went down, they reopened, all of a sudden, in the last... I believe 72 hours, they had to shut their doors again because of the coronavirus spreading. So something's gotta give. We have to in some way keep this economy moving. And right now the Federal Reserve has said, we will do whatever it takes for however long to make sure money is in the system. In particular, that money is foreign, going to foreigners, foreign countries, foreign entities. The emerging markets are in a desperate situation. Countries where we manufacture a ton of thing, a ton of products that we consume here, well, they're not getting orders, so they have no revenue stream. They have no US dollars to transact business to buy agricultural products or um, goods and services from other countries because you do all your business in US dollars there is a major shortage of US dollars throughout the world. So when you hear people talk about, oh, the Fed is just bailing out all the rich billionaires and millionaire companies of the world, consider this. The US dollar is the reserve currency of the entire world. The entire world does business in US dollars. And unfortunately, a lot of the world has heavy amounts of debt that they have to service in US dollars. If there are no US dollars to service that debt, countries collapse. Bonds that were offered by Argentina, other countries throughout the world start to default. People lose masses and masses of money. One of my biggest concerns is the state of Florida. We do a ton of business in this state uh, with tourism. Well, that tourism didn't show up the 1st of March because of the coronavirus. And it is not looking like we're going to be open for business for the summer anytime soon. I mean, think about it. Would you come to Florida, sit on a beach in June after seeing what has been happening on the global uh, stage with people getting sick and dying? I mean, mass graves in New York? Get out of here. I ain't going to go to the beach. And I live here. So the state of Florida generates revenue through sales tax. Well, if that sales, those dollars go away, and because we don't have state income tax, housing prices are gonna devalue at some point. So their tax base is gonna devalue. Think about all the other states throughout the world, or the United States. We're really in a pickle. So when we hear our leaders talk about restarting the country it's not for a greedy thing it's to keep us all on a global scale alive to keep countries moving in the right direction and unfortunately we're not moving too quickly towards that that starting line euro dollars you need to understand that is the underlying plumbing of the entire world. It's how we transact in business. And there is a major shortage of those dollars.